It's all it's right, all right to, be to be just a little bit crazy. Being, being creative, creative is being a little bit crazy in just, just the right vibration. vibration. With, that With that in mind, you should understand, should understand God's, God's completely God's insane. insane. <laughs>
Those types of girls can still love dresses and wear nail polish and act silly and girly all they want. The societal trends and fads that try to tell us about what men and women supposedly are, how they are supposed to act, what they are supposed to wear, what activities they are supposed to enjoy, etc., is nothing more than pure corporate marketing. Companies want to sell products, simple as that. So getting back to the point, females like to express their own sense of beauty, cuteness, and things of that nature, and those external physical expressions are based on how they genuinely feel, psychologically and emotionally. They reserve the right to feel as they do and to customize their own expressions of it as they see fit to. They are not obligated to conform to anyone else's idea of what their expressions are supposedly supposed to mean and represent, or how they supposedly are supposed to feel about it. They are not obligated to that whatsoever, but your pressure tends to convince them to feel obligated, and so once they are out of alignment with themselves, then everything they do feels like they are living a lie because they are doing everything to appease others to prevent themselves from taking shit from people. So, now I'll explain how this creates the fetishism here. Discussing psychology can sometimes seem insulting and patronizing because it calls bullshit on our own insecurities. All humans like to think they are not insecure, and it's just everyone else who is, but reality's a mirror. So the details I'm about to express does run some risk of serving up a nice steaming cup of butter. So just a warning. So picture this. A female expresses herself in whatever way, shape, or form as for how she's feeling. She thinks her expression is cute and pretty. She sees nothing wrong with it. There is nothing wrong with it. In fact, it is absolutely adorable. She's feeling quite confident with herself in this. Then suddenly, something disturbing happens. <laughs> One or more extremely insecure guys also think her expression is adorable, but not in the context she's expressing. Because these guys are feeling extremely insecure about themselves and society has taught them to repress it rather than face it. The psychological projection and overcompensation mechanism kicks in. Though they are allowed to view her expressions as they wish as per their own rights to their own thoughts, emotions, and beliefs, they have a tendency to attempt to force their view on the female with little to no desire to actually understand what she is wanting to express. So they get more than just a little creepy with her about it. It's not their view of her expression that creeps her out, but rather the total and complete disregard for her perspectives of her own expressions. It becomes quickly clear to her that these guys do not even give one flying rat fuck as to what she is thinking and feeling. They only want to persistently attempt to force their own ego's view of things on her. Never once do they say, well, here is my perspective on why I think what you did there was cute. So, what is your perspective? What are you intending to get across? How do you feel? <coughs> so the lack of consideration of her feelings, combined with the force of ego upon her by the guys communicating with her, makes her feel extremely rejected and extremely insulted. So, the creepy factor comes in with the guys insisting upon attempting to dominate her with their views, totally disregarding her. They are acting like Nazis, and she understandably does not care for this one bit. Just when she thinks the situation couldn't get any worse, it does. Now there's a second group of people approaching her. First it was the pro-fetish people, now it's the anti-fetish people, and it's difficult to discern which group has their heads the furthest up their asses. The anti-fetish group has bought into the lie that fetishism is the only real reality, and they have decided to rage against that reality rather than being supportive. 
They think it's creepy and immoral and whatever else, not realizing that they too have drank the societal morning Kool-Aid. So now the girl gets accused of being a fetishist herself, because from their point of view, she's not allowed to define her own expressions as per her own feelings and perspectives. The anti-fetishists insist that she must accept their view of reality as the only view. They insist that she is not allowed to view those expressions in a way that is genuine and authentic to how she actually feels about it. She is told that those expressions mean she is pandering to fetishism and that they cannot mean anything else. They tell her that if she thinks they mean anything else, that she is either lying to them and is a closet case fetishist, or that she is delusional and that she needs to wake up and stop being a naive, immature girl and that she should just get with reality. Fetishism and anti-fetishism are two sides of one dichotomy coin. They are the same thing. This proverbial coin insists that certain expressions can only be viewed in one way and only one way, and that you must decide whether or not you are pro-fetish or anti-fetish. Metaphorically speaking, it would be like asking a straight person, so how long have you been gay? And the person asking will not accept, well, I am not gay, as being a valid answer. Responding with either, well, you are gay, you just don't know it yet, or, you know you're gay, stop lying to me and just answer the damn question. The key to dealing with the fetishism-anti-fetishism -fetishism dichotomy is deceptively simple. Because like everything else under the sun, the external Nazi is a mirror of our own internal Nazi. When we can see it this way, the solution becomes clear. It is as simple as respecting their right to remain in their dichotomy equal to your right to not feel obligated to conform to it. When we do not respect their right to swim in that sort of crap if they wish to, then we are being a Nazi and trying to conform them to our view of who we think they should be. So ironically, we end up doing the same thing as them. This is because society teaches us to fight for our right to be individuals so strongly that we take everyone else's individuality as an attack on ours and vice versa. So it becomes like having an argument with a bathroom mirror. If you openly and actively respect their right to do things as they wish, and equally make known your right to your perspectives, something amazing happens. And it usually happens fairly quickly. You become no fun for them anymore, and they shun you and stop dealing with you. They will usually attempt to goad you a few times because they think that your respect is fake and a fraud. But once they see it's not, they will wear themselves out, tell you how stupid and lame and horrible you supposedly are for not letting their ego dominate you, and then they will fuck off of their own accord. They can only vampire you if you are trying to vampire them. It takes two to tango where there is no dance. If you're not playing an ego game with them, then they will be unable to play one with you. When other people see you do this, you will act as a living example that it's okay for you to be you and that doing so does not have to result in unending drama, catastrophe, and rejection. The people you might think don't exist, those being the ones who are just like you and feel just like you and who want to have friends who are loving and accepting, will then begin to come out of hiding. You only don't know they exist because you're all hiding from each other, because of fear of rejection, because you don't think that anyone exists who could accept you. You haven't been programmed with that belief system, and it is belief systems about reality, not reality itself, that determines our life's consequences. Metaphorically speaking, if you think the only real reality is jumping off a cliff, then the fact that you actually don't have to do so is irrelevant. You will act in the direction of your beliefs and ignore all other data. Thus life will dish out the consequences of that. It's simple physics. 
If you piss into a fan, you're going to get what you're going to get. So, I encourage all women out there to stand confident in the face of adversity. Haters gonna hate and creepers gonna creep. If you don't let this bring you down, then you will attract others to you who are not creepy, hateful, domineering asshats. They will see that you are a person worth knowing. You will no longer feel alone. I encourage all men who understand what I'm talking about to show your support for these ladies. It will be challenging. They have been used to a very different reality than you are offering. At first, they probably won't believe you. Be patient with them. Don't take it personally. Once they see you're not going to abandon them for the crime of being human and getting into moods and ruts, they will begin to accept you more as you teach them more about how to accept themselves by being an example of the change you will be creating.